Hey, I wanted to do a scope. Um, you know, I don't pay attention to a lot of things that are happening on scope, especially anymore. I am very busy and uh, a lot more private with my, thank you, a lot more private with my life. Um, and especially with Susie, as my love has grown for Susie, I have uh, become even more protective over her and I don't show her nearly as much as I used to on scope. The, the kisses and the hugs and the embraces and the talk is, is not here on scope, isn't present, but that doesn't mean that it's not happening. Um, I have let a lot of negative energy from places in scope get into my head even about Susie, like, oh, maybe she's this or maybe she's that. But she's proven time and time again, behind the scenes, not on scope, behind the scenes of her extreme devotion, admiration, and love for me. It's not obsessive. She's in love. She's in love. And I love her very much as well. The reason that I broke up with her is because of very just typical crap. There's not any like secret motives or like something weird going on of like, oh, I'm not, I'm not with Susie because this or that. It's, it's like, we're just not technically together because I do this with everyone I date. It's not Susie, it's me. I, I take the love that I think I deserve. Just like with Peter right now, you know, I'm not, I, I told Peter last night, I said, I'm not going to see, see you when I, when, or if I go out to LA, I don't, I'm not connecting like I should with anyone right now. And it makes sense. Why? From a psychological standpoint, because of everything I've been going through. So, you know, and another thing that I would like to point out is when I'm, when I was hiking in the Smoky Mountains, that's the time you clear your head. Your head becomes very clear. For anyone that is an outdoors person or whatever your form of meditation is, when you go outside and you really get to be one with nature and just clear your mind and think about things, things, things come into perspective for you. And I realized something. And the thing that I realized is I could not get Susie off of my mind and my sister had to get sick of me talking about her because everything Susie this Susie that Susie this Susie that and an another thing of resistance that I think that I have put on it is because I didn't want that I didn't want a relationship or anything to come out of it but she has still stuck by my side and every time I see her, I'm just so happy. And, you know, she came through my door just a little bit ago. And, uh, you know, we embraced and hugged and uh, we kissed. And, you know, I played with her curly hair for like half an hour. It was like a, a half an hour, uh, hello. And it's, you guys don't see that anymore though, because people have really backed us into a, a corner of, you know, what we show and then they splice it up. And she said, I don't want to be on scope tonight. And I said, why? I don't care if she doesn't. That's fine. I said, why though? And she told me, you know, some of the things that people were saying, and that's just not true. That's just not true. So I just wanted to clear that up and say that I adore Susie. Susie is so, so sweet. She's, she's a, she's a wonderful person. She's a wonderful person. And, you know, even though I had, I was broken up with her technically and I talked to Peter, you know, there for a hot second and was really thinking things out with him, I was completely open and honest about it. I'm not saying that it was still 
you know, I don't know. It was a tough position. Who knew that Peter would just come back out of nowhere? You know, who knew that? And, um, you know, that was the course of events. It's, I broke up with Susie, right? So we were already broke up. And then Peter came around. And Susie and I still aren't technically together right now. But, I mean, we may as well be with how we act. But, you know, she's, I love Susie so much. She's wonderful. And like I said, I let people get things into my head and I really start get to thinking about that things that people say on scope. And I'm like, well, maybe this is true or that's true. Like it even gets to me, you know, so I can only imagine how it gets to you guys of hearing things about Susie. Like maybe she is doing this or doing that, but it's not. I'm and nobody knows better than me. Take it from me, someone that is very intuitive very uh, an extreme realist extremely honest that she is just in it for love she just loves me um you know i met three of her closest best friends in chicago all of which she's been friends with for a long amount of time which is very telling about her and She's she's just she's a really great person and I know that people want to look for things Oh really 46 Weird but that's the thing we're not only there for each other when we need each other She's there for me. Like I said, I was, I could have been thinking about anything for all, what, 20 hours that I hiked. And I was thinking about her. Exactly, Jessica. And you guys, you know, I don't expect, you know, that's something that people say about Briops or my family here on Scope is that, you guys all have to agree with me or like I'm some mass dictator or something like you know that's so silly it's just you guys can have your own opinion you know like obviously do do I do I want you to say I hate Susie no I don't want you to say bad stuff about her but you don't have to be like I think this is the best idea ever you don't have to be like that but I think that we all need to come to the to grips with that she really is just here out of love does she do some things that I think are hella weird yes yes she does but do all of my exes do things that I think are weird yes I mean if I if I could put my exes through the last 10 years under a periscope microscope Oh my god the things we could pick apart about all of my exes you guys would have had a heyday you guys would have been full throttle, way more than with Susie on some of my exes. So, she's just, she's such a sweetheart though. She, she doesn't deserve it. Not saying that I do either, but she definitely doesn't deserve any of this. And I love her so much. I wouldn't keep someone around I didn't love so much. That's, that's crazy. Is she helping me financially? No, she's not. I mean, yeah, does she pick up the dinner tab? Yes. Do I pick up the dinner tab? Yes. You know? Like, so stuff like that. But other than that, she's not paying for anything. That's another thing. That's right, Rice Krispie Jojo. Yeah, it's, 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 our, it's our business, even if she did pay for everything. That's our business. Nobody would question it if it was a man, you know? No one would be like, wow, the guy is paying for everything for Rachel. No one would say that. But even that, it's not true anyways. I uh, will just repeat your important comment. I'm watching it right now.
Ruby, I don't know what I'm going to find out. What do you think I'm going to find out? There's no, there's no, there's no secrets with Suzanne. She's not like secretly doing anything. As much as we all are trying to find something wrong with her, it's just, you see, what you get is what you, what you see is what you get. What, Rice Krispie Jojo? I missed it. Yeah, I will, you know, I was just going through like a wicked ass time. I don't know what to, you know, like, I mean, it, but it wasn't you guys is what's bothering her. It's these people are, um, you, exactly the reason that I told you guys I didn't want to do reality TV. It's exactly the worst nightmare of people are splicing together our scopes and creating their own storylines. Okay, 46. <laughs> Chad. I'm not, no, I'm not trying to convince myself of anything. I was just sad to see her sad because I was so happy to see her. I'm not trying to convince myself of anything. Come on, guys. There's what, there's, Susie's not up to anything. As much as we all try to figure out what's wrong with her, there's nothing wrong with her. Like, I try to find something, you know, like, oh, God, she's this evil person. But she's not. No, she's not manipulating me. She's not. She's not manipulating me. She wants me to love her. I can't call that manipulation. I, and I do love her. Oh, really love me? Thanks, 17. That's right, Cindy. But, Ruby, I'm telling you, it's, it's the only reason that you guys are seeing that pattern with Susie. It's not just Susie. It's not. It's with everyone I date. One week they're here, the next week I'm trying to find a reason to get rid of them. It's, it's my own problem of just not letting people love me. It's not Susie. It's me. There you go, Myra. If you follow any relationship, this happens quite often. Yes, it does, Jessica. Mine may be a little bit more extreme than others, but it does. It happens often. Exactly, a defense mechanism. Thanks, Swinger. Oh, thanks, love me. Oh, thank you. You know, it's not like, Katie, I'm not, I'm not letting anyone pull me down. I, she didn't even, like, she was shielding me from it. She wouldn't tell me exactly what was going on. She just told me, like, bits and pieces because she gets um, YouTube channels and videos taken down and stuff. And, you know, it's, as only a human would do, you get curious and you watch some of it, and it got to her. It usually doesn't, but this time it did. And she was upset, and I don't like seeing my Susie upset. I don't like it. That's okay, Jamie. You know, it's just, this is really how it is. is it, it sucks because you guys are so much in my corner. So when, oh yeah, you do hear crickets. It's getting warmer. It's getting summer. It's getting summertime. Um, you guys are so much in my corner. So you feel so much more of what just, if I called a friend and told them, because you see it, you get to see my facial reaction all the time. Like, 
when she does something, you know, where I, when she goes in the laundry room and I'm like, why in the fuck is she in the laundry room again? Like you guys, you guys see me at moments that normally friends or family or whatever wouldn't see people in a relationship. And so you just feel it with me so much more. And it's, it hasn't worked in my interest, you know? Exactly, Jessica. It's not about just limited scopes, though, because they're taking our scopes and they're posting them in other places, which I really don't know what to do about that. I, you know, I... As much as I love growing my audience, like most people here on Scope, they're like, I want a bigger room, I want a better room. But at this point, I'm thinking, do we just start doing private Scopes? You know, do I just start making it private for my followers? I don't know. It's sad because, um, you know, Scope was my favorite place to be. And my favorite thing about Scope is that it was there for 24 hours and then gone. But now people are taking that away. They're stealing that from me for that, that freedom of having the Scopes being gone in 24 hours. And not only stealing it, but they're splicing in their benefit. I don't think, no, web viewers can't watch private scopes. Yeah, they monetize off of it. And then there's just some that are just purely obsessed, which you guys know. It's, it's crazy to me how much time people put into Susie and I, or into me in general, you know. Jamie, it's probably, she was just probably emotional after a fight, Jamie. Jamie, or to anyone else that Susie has blocked on here, I promise you this is what happened. Imagine being Susie and being in a, my scope just watching it and seeing a whole bunch of comments saying, it's okay to be rid of her. And she's just hurt. She's sitting there crying because we just broke up and she's just going through and blocking everyone. It wasn't out of malicious intent or she wasn't looking at names, I'm sure, or whatever. She was just like, or maybe she was looking at names and thinking like, how could all of these people, I thought that they were for us or loved us or whatever. And it just felt like it didn't feel good for her. What do you guys say? What? I'd love for her to follow me. I love you both. Thanks, Mary. So that's it. You know, I'm not saying that we're going to go and get married and have a huge fiesta or anything. But I do. I, re I really love and adore her. I, I love... I love the way she looks. I love her curly hair. I love her beautiful bluish green eyes. I love her cute nose. I love her smile. I love her laugh. I love the way that she makes me laugh. I love her intelligence. I love her demeanor. I love the little like thing that she does when she does that. I don't know if you guys have ever noticed that. I 
I love her boobs. I love her body. I love everything about her. I love her milky white skin. I love her boobs that I don't even ever want you guys to see even a bit of her cleavage of. I love her. I love, love, love the hell out of that woman. Now you Oh yeah, I love her three minutes. Oh, are you kidding? Yes. I love her voice. Porcelain Sue's. I told her when we go on vacation, oh, I fell in love with Susie that night. She lip synced to Alanis Morissette. I know, oh my God. She had Lady swooning like, ooh. <laughs> That's what I need to have her do is just do another lip sync. <laughs> but I told her, I said, when we go on vacation, I'm rubbing SPF 80 all over your milky white skin to protect you. And I said, I want you to smell like vacation. <laughs> So I want to get banana boat, put banana boat all over her. <laughs> yeah, 100 SPF. <laughs> yeah, she's in the snow like a coconut. That's semi erotic <laughs> Yes, exactly. Amazon wish list. Here comes banana boat. <laughs> Get a burka and an umbrella. Smell like vacation. I do. I want her to smell like vacation. Scratch and sniff. Thanks, Ash. Thanks, Rice Krispie Jojo. You know, I'm... I'm just... I'm such an emotional person. I mean, yeah, I'm just so emotional. And, you know, I had such a, a hard life growing up. And I didn't... I would... I never really, long story, extremely shortened to one sentence. I wasn't shown love the way that most children growing up are shown love and the way to properly reciprocate, reciprocate love, like all of this intertwined together. You know, it's, it's been something that I've been working on for a long time of growing and be and you know going to therapy which I need to get back into I haven't been going to therapy since I've been back from uh, LA so I need to get back in therapy here in Indiana and continue growing and continue working on it because you know it's it never hurts to keep keep working on self-improvement absolutely and I love her unconditionally and you know, I feel like, I don't know. I don't know why people don't think that I do. Like, maybe just because I'm more hasty as well. Like, I've said all the same things about her that she said about me. But it's just that I also come with a lot more aggravation and like, oh, she's getting on my nerves and bitching and stuff. But I've said the exact same things about her that she says about me. You know, when people say... Oh, Susie's delusional. Like Rachel doesn't really da 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 da, and it's not true. It's just not true. She's wonderful. There you go, Jess. Thanks, Anthony. Exactly, Cheryl. We all good? I think so. Thanks, Christy. You got, you know, like I said, I it's I didn't say it's going to end in, you know, paradise and us walking off to the sunset until we're both, you know, 90 something years old or whatever. But it's but do do I really love her? Yes. Absolutely. I do. If I had a dime for every time my husband was driving me nuts, I'd be a rich woman, right? So that's all. <laughs> Jessica, I see that. Yeah, she's a ride or die. You don't come across those often. And, and as I would be... Oh, thanks, Lynn. And as I would be for, for her.
Yeah, nine years with hubby didn't come with zero bad days. Mm. All right, have fun making out. Hubby is an ass, but he's my ass. I mean, see, Clay said, I just got here. Um, so. <laughs> thanks, Katie. Oh, thanks. Oh, man, I can't say your name. Clay, that's messed up. I hate that you're not getting notifications. Yeah, well, I like I said, I just I just wanted to clear up those few things. I'm going to go now.